Yes, as James says, the signal is wonderful here in the Mara, as are the lion. And especially so today for VM and myself, we've been spoilt rotten. And it didn't take us long to come across these members of the Angama Pride. It seems like two lioness and the seven bigger cubs that are about three or four months old, all lazing about in the shade of a tree here. And what I'm guessing has happened is that the other lioness, who's got the three smaller cubs, has moved off slightly kind of further down in the direction that you can see now, as that's where we left her this morning. These ones, interestingly, came back to this tree. They lay down here for a short moment this morning. And for those of you who were with us, that, this, that was when the angry aunt started snarling at the cubs. And then they all continued to move off. But some have returned here, and others, or the other lioness, has moved off a little bit further down a riverbed that kind of runs alongside this road. And as you can see, it is siesta time. They did ever so briefly open one eye when we arrived, just to keep an eye on us, to see who we were. And isn't it wonderful how we can be so close to them, yet they can go about their daily business with little concern of us being here. This lady seems to be kind of the most awake out of the rest of them. And you never know with these animals. You could get lucky. They could get up and start moving. It's difficult to see now, though. But when they were on the move this morning, we did notice that their bellies were very, very full. So they're going to be uninclined to go out and search for food. Early on, they'll probably wait for things to cool down, wait for the cover of darkness before they get moving. Who knows, though? If we look to our right, just to give you a bit of a perspective of the area we're in and where we've come from, there's a herd of giraffe kind of dotted off across us. And these are the same giraffe we were looking at earlier. Hello, Dizzy. You've mentioned that these lions look huge compared to the lions in the Sabi Sands. And you know what? I think you're entirely right. I think they are considerably bigger. They get fed extremely well here for a few months each year. And that is mainly during the migration. Outside of the migration, the prize of lion can actually have quite tricky times here because they don't have the surplus of food that they've been used to cashing in on. They're probably also a little bit slow and sluggish, having gained so much weight over what you could essentially call the Lion of the Mara's festive season. Ah. Well, thanks for sending through all these questions already. Boyd has sent one through wondering about the flies that are dotted all over these lions. And why are they there? Good question. Uh, like most flies, they are attracted to kind of smelly things, and lions do have quite a smelly breath, I am told, understandably. Uh, although these flies, I'm fairly certain, are biting flies. So they are actually hoping to try and suck little bits of blood from the lion. And the best place to do that is where there is the least fur. And you'll notice that most of the flies are congregated on the snout where it's the easiest place or most likely place that their tiny little proboscis, like a little needle, will be able to puncture into the lion's bloodstream while they fill up with some lion gas and then off they go. So Boyd, that is what the flies are doing. Obviously quite a nuisance for the lions. They'll twitch their ears from time to time, even from time to time, they'll snap at them when they're really frustrated. Thankfully, though, the flies are not biting us, so that's the good news. There are some parts of East Africa where you get lots of tsetse flies, which can be an absolute nightmare.
Well, I was discussing the likelihood of them getting up and active and doing any hunting a little bit later on, and James is interested to know if their strike rate or their efficiency of the lions in the Mara is more effective than that of lions in other areas. And, James, I think certainly yes, over the migration months when there's an absolute bounty of food it's a buffet for the lions. They literally probably don't even have to get up from where they're sitting. They can just wait for the wildebeest to pass by or the zebra to pass by. Such, such a state of chaos and confusion that the lions have actually got it very, very easy. And it would be an unfair statistic almost to base their skill sets against other lions because they really are just in a very fortunate place to be a lion over those months. But I guess if you spread that out over the year, or maybe kind of only track them during a, a more likely or more common uh, period of, of prey, it would be interesting to see. Uh, and I'm guessing what would happen is you'd probably find that, you know, certain individuals within prides are the, the key hunters more so than others. And then, yes, yeah, certainly one pride may have more skilled hunters than others. But I don't think we can categorically say that here in the Mara that they are more successful hunters. Although, the next few months is going to allow us firsthand the most awesome experience and opportunity to be able to investigate this. And we'll find out for ourselves in a, in a short time, James. So, keep watching. And... What I can assure you is there is going to be lots and lots of action to look forward to. Okay, well, we're going to probably leave these lions and head back to a little waterhole where there was a hummocorp fishing and scratch around, see if we can find anything else exciting and then come back a little bit later when it's more likely that they wake up. And in the meantime, you're off to Jamie.